This video is going to be about making up a high-pressure air compressor system from uh, a scrapped air conditioner. This particular Maytag window air conditioner came to me as scrap from work. It fell out of a second floor window, took a very hard landing on the ground, and all the gas has leaked out of it, so this unit is ready to scrap for a hopefully working compressor that can be made into a high-pressure air system. Here's an example of a finished high-pressure air system. This one was made from uh, an equally smashed up refrigerator that was given to me by my work. This one uh, has an on-off switch. I added a cooling fan from an old microwave oven that was scrapped to keep the compressor cool if it's on a long time. It has uh, a 0 to 600 PSI gauge on the output and uh, it has uh, a quick connect air chuck and a 6 foot uh, long 5100 PSI rated high pressure air hose with uh, a chuck on it. So you can make up a nice high pressure air system from scrap. Let's see what we can get out of this nasty old air conditioner. As you can see, when it fell the two floors to the ground, the front was smashed out of the unit, and the whole frame and body of it is twisted, but it should still uh, come apart easily, so let's get started and see if we can make a high-pressure air system out of this scrap. At this point, I've removed the outer case, and we can now see the tall cylindrical black compressor and some of its wiring. We need to see all of the wiring to find out if there's a capacitor or anything that's required to be removed with the motor and wired with it, because if there is a capacitor, the compressor's motor will not work properly unless we uh, recover and wire in the capacitor. So let's remove more metal and plastic flaps and whatnot that are preventing us from seeing the wiring and carefully check how this unit is wired. Here the unit's wiring is more exposed. We can see that there's three wires that come out of the compressor itself, a red, a black, and a blue. We can also see that there is a capacitor and it's going to have to be recovered and wired to the compressor properly. The first part of the wiring is pretty self-evident here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. One side of the AC line cord goes to a relay, which connects it directly to the blue wire. So the blue compressor wire is one side of the 120 volt AC. So I can remove this wire now since I know what it does and I'll put a piece of tape that says uh, AC line cord on the blue wire. The capacitor found in this unit is two capacitors in one which can make it a little more difficult for someone to figure out but what I need to remove from it are any of the wires that relate to the unit's fan motor, which also requires a capacitor. For instance, the yellow wire that can be seen going to the capacitor is for the fan motor. I can therefore remove the yellow wire. There's also an orange wire going to the capacitor that runs to the fan motor. I can remove this too. Since I don't really care about the fan motor and its wiring confusion, what I've done is unhook all of the fan motor leads and put them up top, as you can see here, where they're out of the way. Suddenly things are looking a lot more simple and traceable in the capacitor area. 
A short while ago in the video, we saw that one side of the AC line cord goes directly to the blue compressor wire. Now the other side of the line cord is still attached to the little PC board, but if we flip the board over, we can see that that side of the AC line is on a pad that joins directly to the white wire. So that gives us the other side of the AC hookup. We can now hook up this compressor outside the unit, and if it's not defective, it will run. At this point in the process, we figured out how to hook the AC up directly to the compressor while keeping the capacitor in the circuit, because the capacitor is absolutely required for the compressor motor to run properly. Also attached to the capacitor, I found this little thing that's supposed to be an overload protection device or something. I've simply left it attached. I'll leave it there and use it. The next step in recovering this compressor is going to be to physically remove it from the smashed air conditioner body, attach a line cord to the connections that I figured out, plug it in, and see if it works. So let's get set up to do this. The compressor has now been physically removed from the scrap AC unit by hacksawing through the copper suction and copper output lines. As we can see, they're cut here and here, and the unit's free, ready to wire to the line cord, ready to test. While removing the compressor from the body of the air conditioner, I made sure to save all the rubber shock mountings for the compressor, so that when I do mount it on a board or something to use it, I will have its anti-vibration shock mounts. At this point, I've cleared a lot of junk off the bench, just leaving the compressor and its uh, capacitor assembly. I've now hooked up a uh, line cord to the white and the blue wires, which we determined earlier were where the line cord has to be attached. At this point, the unit's ready to plug in and test. Let's see if we've recovered a live working compressor or a dead failure. Plugging in now. I hear activity. I have good suction holding my finger against the suction side. Uh, there is air blowing out and it can build up pressure. This is a working little air conditioner compressor that's now properly wired and functioning. According to a sticker that I found inside the body of the air conditioner, the high side pressure on this one was 400 psi, so this compressor should be capable of some nice uh, high-pressure air work. This concludes removal and wiring of the compressor from the window air conditioner unit that it was recovered from. We've shown tracing the wiring, removing the unit, hooking it up, and getting it to run. To finish this project off, I would have to mount the compressor and capacitor on a wooden or metal base. I would have to add an on-off switch. It's direct wired right now. Plug it in. It just turns on. Unplug it to turn it off. Uh, an on-off switch is nice. I do have some old fans from uh, microwave ovens, so I could rig up a cooling fan 
onto this one when I put it on a base. Also, a filter of some sort should be added onto the suction side so that it can't suck in any dust and dirt as it's being used for a high-pressure air system, perhaps for air cannons or other interesting uses. And on the high-pressure output side, uh, I would want to add a 0 to 600 PSI gauge and a quick connect coupler chuck so I can use it with my various 5100 PSI rated high pressure air hoses. Hopefully this video was interesting and helpful. I know I'd done one uh, a while back about removing the compressor from a broken refrigerator, and I had been waiting for an air conditioner to come in so that I could do this video that I've just made on salvaging a working compressor from an old scrapped window air conditioner. 